American bombers have just bombed an advanced enemy landing field. The mission of these planes was to put the field out of action so that parachute troops can move in and capture it for use by our troops. The bombers have done a good job on this enemy runway. Craters 10 feet deep and 30 feet in diameter have made it useless as a landing field. After its capture by parachute troops, it will have to be repaired for use by Allied planes. This is a job for the airborne aviation engineers. In concealed bivouac adjacent to an advanced air drone, there is a company of such engineers. Upon receiving word that the enemy field has been captured, the company prepares to move out at once and repair it. Improvised camouflage is hastily removed and the equipment is moved out to waiting cargo planes for loading. The Air Force commander has furnished 20 C-47s, the present standard cargo plane, to transport the company. In the first flight to take off are two planes, each loaded with 16 men and a 50 caliber anti-aircraft machine gun. The third plane carries an air compressor and various tool chests. The compressor weighs 1,200 pounds and can be lifted into the plane by hand. A 2,200-pound quarter-ton truck is loaded for use in rapid reconnaissance upon landing. The remaining equipment is loaded in sequence according to its need in performing the mission. Loading ramps of plywood are carried under the seats in the cargo compartment. They can be put down quickly for unloading equipment from the plane. The wheel tractor, which is used for pulling scrapers, weighs 3,000 pounds and is rated at 23 drawbar horsepower. It has a hydraulic system for operating the towed scraper. All loads must be blocked, lashed down, and so placed that the plane is stable in flight. The towed scraper has a tricycle wheel arrangement. Note that the dual front wheel must run on the left-hand ramp. The weight of this piece of equipment is 2,600 pounds empty. Its capacity is one and one-half yards struck measure, two yards heaping. The wheels must be followed closely with chock to keep equipment from running back. In loading, the machine is run up the ramp and the rear end is swung into the plane. wheel grader weighs 1,900 pounds. Its mold board is six and one-half feet long. 
To make loading easier, the mold board must have its right edge forward. The 4,300 pound crawler tractor is loaded. It is rated at 20 drawbar horsepower and is hydraulically equipped for operating the blade and scraper. The width of the bulldozer blade is 58 inches. The tractor is loaded backward to enable the operator to see his track and to make the turn into the plane easier. This also facilitates unloading. One inch plank should be laid to prevent damage to the floor of the plane. Gliders are used for certain missions. Here is a CG-4A glider. Eight men are required to lift the tail so that the nose rests on the ground. In this position, a quarter ton truck easily loads itself. The nose is lowered into position and the glider is ready to go. Now the first plane or glider lands at the bombed airfield on a temporary landing strip prepared by combat engineer parachute troop who sees the airdrome. Men and machine guns immediately establish local security for the working party. The air compressor has a capacity of 60 cubic feet per minute at 100 pounds discharge pressure. With its attachments, it can perform many operations such as tamping, cutting, sawing, drilling, and pumping. The wheel tractor is similar to the ordinary farm tractor, except that it has a box filled with sand to increase the weight on the rear wheels. The rear tires may be filled with water instead of air to further increase the weight. These methods give better traction. Scraper is similar to the larger ones now in use by standard aviation engineer battalions, except that the bowl is hydraulically operated. The bowl tips up so that the load is dumped by gravity. In loading and unloading the grader, the ramps are placed to fit the rear wheels. The right front wheel runs on the right-hand ramp, while the left front wheel is chained to the greater frame. The ramps also must be placed to fit the narrow width of the tractor. The right-hand ramp is approximately three inches lower than the left, so that a plank must be tied on the top of the right ramp to keep the tractor level. Note that two short ramps are used for this job.